you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time. Okay, good morning and welcome to the May the 23rd edition of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and we do thank you for listening to today's program. Now, we would love for you to be a part of the program, and you can do that by dialing this number, which is 516 516- Four five three nine nine two one, and if you have a question or a brief comment, uh, just press the number one button and give that comment, and uh, you can be heard. And we thank you for that. If you are a first-time caller, uh, don't forget to uh, give your name to the call screener. As a matter of fact, anybody that calls in. Give your name to the call screener so the call screener can identify you, and then that helps me to look on my screen, and I can call your name out, hopefully, and I do work hard at this, to not butcher it. But um, (laughs) forgive me, because sometimes, and a lot of times I do, but I'm still learning. All right, but anyway, first-time callers, you can call in and make sure you tell the call screener that, and... They will let me know that you are on the line, and we will get you in. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And um, I will give you an indication that I have gotten or received your Gmail, and it will be read in an appropriate time. And lastly, you can join the uh, chat room, and all you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com, and you want to click on where it says Programs, and then click on where it has the Produce Justice Show, and you click on that, and then the chat room icon is available for you to get in and join the chat. And um, if you'd like a review on what we discussed last week and sometime rules constructive action items has a list of uh, things that were discussed last week and you can uh, adhere to that and occasionally there's something that may come up in the chat room a statement or comment that I will read over the air but do this do not ask me or use the chat room to ask me a question to ask Mr. Fuller. Uh, I will not do that. That is what the Gmail is for or the number that you call in. That's the call-in number. So we can do that. Okay, I believe that is all the house cleaning. Oh, yeah, one more thing. The book that will be discussed primarily today is Mr. Fuller's publication called The United independent contemporary code system concept. Now, you need to get this book, and you can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. That is ProduceJustice.com. And somewhere within this hour or two-hour program, um, Mr. Fuller will discuss that book and how you need to get the code book so we can do that. Okay, I think that's all the house cleaning that I have to do. So let's get started here by this. Let's say good morning, Mr. Fuller, and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay, Mr. Fuller is still learning. Okay, for those that who are uh, That word is compensatory. What did I say? I think you I said it. contemporary. Well, okay, well, excuse well, me. Yeah, like the, the United Independent Compensatory 
code concept. Thank you for correcting me. Okay. All righty. Anyway, for those who are new to the program, you have to be specific, so thank you, Mr. Fuller, for that correction. For those who are new to the program, we have a set that we call the the thoughts and expressions on the mind of Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, today being the 23rd of May, 2023, what is on your mind? Uh, the term American and, um, and uh, America and uh, the United States of America, uh, I've received a long email from someone where they keep mentioning the United States of America and uh, people who uh, call Americans and mentioning them as people who now exist. And according to what I have written, I want to emphasize this so that people will understand what the frame of reference in which I talk about the United States of America and uh, Americans themselves and uh, the word America. America is not a place, according to the code. There's no such thing as an American people. They don't exist. They should exist because, first of all, according to the code, Americans, by definition, are people who practice justice. I want to get that straight. So there's no confusion. Now, according to the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, and according to logic, because the whole concept is supposed to be based on, be based on logic, you cannot have a system of racism and a system of Americanism on the same planet at the same time. Now that statement is either true or false. According to the compensatory code and compensatory logic, to have an American, just one, in the system of white supremacy on the same planet at the same time is, according to logic, absolutely impossible. Because you can't have the system of white supremacy and a system of justice on the same planet at the same time. That is impossible. And this is just a point of view that I think can be proven in any court of law where they really mean we're going to get, first of all, the truth by defining what is an American. Start with that. What is the United States of America? Is it some type of phantom or is it something that's really real? Can you put your hands on an actual American right this minute anywhere on the planet? According to logic. You might can put your hands on a person who is a state's person for the system of white supremacy. If two of them are together, 
whatever together means, now you got two white supremacists. But when you say United States, you can have a United States of white supremacy, which is what you do have. That does exist. But no United States of America has ever existed in the system of white supremacy. That's impossible. You see, there's going to be one or the other. You can't have white supremacy in an American system. That's impossible. It can't be done by anybody. Why? Because you can't have justice and a system of white supremacy on the same planet at the same time. No one can pull that off or has pulled it off. One or the other can exist, but not both on the same planet at the same time. It can't be done. That's impossible. Based on what? Neely Fuller saying it? No. Based on any school of logic or any framework of logic or any type of thing that people would say in a, in a slang way makes sense, it can't be done. It will never be done. So if you have the system of white supremacy anywhere, you can't have no matter how hard you try to try, you're not going to have a United States of America, nor are you going to have any Americans at all. Or for that matter, any Africans or any Asians. Why? Because Americans and Africans and Asians in order to have any validity at all, are people who practice justice. And no one, according to the evidence, can practice justice in a system of white supremacy. That's impossible. No one can do it, not for five minutes. According to what? Logic, mathematics, how about that? Mathematics, mathematics doesn't lie. It can't be done, period. So when people talk about America does this or America does that, you're talking about something that doesn't exist. Because in order for people, for anyone to be American, they have to practice justice. American justice. Justice, American. And you cannot have justice in a system of white supremacy. It's totally impossible. It seems like everybody would have figured that out by now. Every college professor, I have a letter here that I got from somebody, a very long one. And they describe America doing this and America doing that. I turn on my television, I see professors saying, America has mistreated black people. Something that doesn't exist can't mistreat anybody. Now, that person thinks for about five minutes, that think person, professor, or whomever, will say, white supremacy, racism, mistreat black people. And then some people will say, America practices racism. Wow, crawl up under the table before you say something like that. 
That's impossible. It's impossible. Any judge would sit there and if he's really if he's really thinking, got out of law school or whatever. Or just use plain what you call country dumb logic would never say anything like that. If you think about it. Think about it. You can't have justice and white supremacy on the same planet at the same time. And you can't have white supremacy and Americans on the same planet at the same time. It doesn't compute. In no computer, artificial intelligence or anything else, can't be done. So the code says, stop saying that. Don't mix up anything American or African or Asian with the system of white supremacy. It stands alone. That's what I have to say. Now, anybody who wants to call in and talk about that or anything else can. All righty. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Let's go to the phone lines, and let's go to Victor in Toronto. Good morning, Victor. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Oh, good morning, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Fuller. Um, My question for Mr. Fuller is, um, I'm just looking for the page. (laughs) Um, Mr. Bobby, um, Mr. Fuller, why is it that um, white supremacists teach non-white people that they are members of her race when the only reason for being a member of her race is to practice racism? Because it works for the white supremacists. Am I to ask two questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me apologize. There's more to the question. Yes. Um, Okay, you know what, Mr. Fuller, you just answered that first question. Oh, that was the first question. Uh Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Fuller. No, no, I I cut you off. I I thought that that was one question. Okay, let me... That's one, one, according to the code, one question at a time. It's okay to ask a series of questions, but it's one question at a time, and you never move to the second question without answering the first. That's why I burned it out because uh, I thought I was asking, answering one question. I thought you were finished. So, uh, oh, I want to no, apologize. Okay, Mr. Fuller, go ahead. It's okay, Mr. No, Fuller. You're, you're correct. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Yes, according to the code, the white supremacists don't do anything unless they think it's going to give strength to the system of white supremacy. That's code. That's a solid part of the code, the compensatory counter-racist code. The white supremacists do not do anything Unless it's a huge mistake, which they do make mistakes, but they correct them. That's why they're still in business. But they don't do anything without the intention of making the system of white supremacy stronger. That's just not in a white supremacist DNA or whatever you want to call it. They just don't do that. That's why they've lasted so long. That's why they're so the experts of what they do, because they don't keep making the mistakes, same mistakes over and over again, like black people do. And we'll call it tradition. It's a huge mistake. It's not paying off. 
But we don't have that kind of logic. We're not logical people. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. We go by how we feel rather than something that's mathematical. We talk about how we feel all the time. Ain't the way I feel about it. Your feelings change every five minutes or less. Hmm. They're completely unreliable unless they are attached to logic. Got to be mathematical or feelings Mm -hmm. don't count. Was there Mm -hmm. another question? Uh Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Victor, for your call. Gmail here. This is from Ray. says this, um, Mr. Fuller, a couple of months ago, you spoke about a conversation between you and your sergeant, and I'm paraphrasing, but he told you that, quote, your approach to handling things were similar to being blindfolded while speeding in a car down a dark highway, end of quote. My question for you, Mr. Fuller, is, is that not the type of nerve and grit that is needed in order to counter the system of white supremacy? And are black people supposed to comply with the white supremacists until they decide on a final solution for black people similar to Nazi Germany? I don't know. The white supremacists intend to have the system of white supremacy forever. Because it pays. And they don't see any reason to have any other system because according to what the white supremacists say themselves, there is no better system. When it comes to everything, in every area of activity, you can't beat the system of white supremacy. In economics, in education, if you're a white supremacist, you know more than everybody put together. Not as an individual person, but as a collective. That's what they mean by all of the people who believe in white supremacy stand together, proliferating, having children and whatnot. They don't believe, they believe in having enough white people on this planet. They say, of course, and, and these white people have to dominate all of the people who are non-white. It's the best arrangement, according to them. They say, you have the white supremacists themselves say, you haven't seen any evidence in any better arrangement, have you? People all over the world say, which, white, which way did the white people go? They climb over fences and drown their children in, in deep water. Boats turning over. With a whole bunch of dark-skinned people going into the ocean, being eaten by the sharks. Trying to do what? Which way did the white people go? I can't stand being around my own people for another minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are crazy. I got to get away from them. They're killing no food, no nothing. I mean, don't even have a bicycle. Better catch up with those white folks. Well, somebody got some sense about something. Sometime. That's what the dark-skinned people of the world say. And the evidence shows it. Now, is that some kind of magic going on? Or is that some kind of muscle that's going on? Neely Fuller took the position that that was a whole lot of muscle on the part of people who classified themselves as white and said they were going to start a system called the System of White Supremacy, and it is the most successful religious system and political system ever thought up in the minds of people, according to the evidence. And it is the most evil, the most successful, and the most evil. Why? 
because it mistreats people based on color. That's why. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to be just a tad early. We're going to take a little break so we can go right straight back to the cause. You're listening to the Counter Racist Coach Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for doing that. Now, to get in contact with the show, you know the numbers, but for those new, here's the number, 516-453-9921, and you may listen to the show or you may press the number one button if you have a question or a brief comment, give it to uh, uh, Mr. Fuller, and then uh, Mr. Fuller will answer your question uh, when uh, your time comes up. You can also contact me by Gmail. The uh, address is the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And lastly, you can join the chat room by going to blogtalkradio.com. You want to click on where it says uh, program. You click that on, and then uh, uh, application or will come up where you want to get the shows, and you want the Produce Justice show. So you get that show, and then you can uh, enter into the uh, chat room, which will be good for you. Okay, all the books and materials that Mr. Fuller will discuss. Well, the main book is the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept that you can purchase by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. Okay, back to the phone calls, and let's go to Helen B. in New York. Get ready, Helen. Here we go. And you are... On, wait a minute, there you go, you're on with Mr. Fuller, good morning. Good morning, peaceful greetings, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller, and to all the callers. I have two quick questions. Mr. Fuller, did you receive any type of therapy after you're serving in, after serving in the Army? And number two, did you receive full financial compensation after your service in the Army? Those are my two questions, and I'd like to stay on the line, please. Thank you. Did I receive any kind of therapy? Uh, Yes, sir. Not officially. I mean, uh, uh, nobody told me I was under any kind of therapy. Uh, I guess being in the Army is supposed to be my therapy for a black person. This is good for you. (laughs) That's what they told me. I don't know whether they call that therapy or not. They call it basic training and a whole bunch of other type training. They train you to kill. I couldn't see the connection between that and therapy, but uh, that was it. <laughs> well, we, mm. we we through having you help us to do some killing because I didn't do none. I had a rifle. I was supposed to be doing it, but they assigned me to a telephone. And so the whole time I was on the front line, that's what I was doing on a telephone. And, mm-hmm. and and almost freezing to death. Now, they didn't give me no therapy for that. They just had a field jacket. And a, finally, 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 during the winter, I got a parka. But I thought I was going to freeze to death. I wasn't afraid of the bullets. I got to mm-hmm. a place where I, that, that, that Korean winter, was so cold, I said, I'm, I'm about ready to take a bullet. <laughs> I cannot stand this cold. I mean, mm. below zero all the time, my goodness, during the winter. Mm-hmm. And what was that second question, Helen? Second Helen B.? Question. Yes, sir? Yeah, what the was second that second question? Qu- was, oh, I'm, I apologize. The second question was, did... He received full financial compensation after he left the service. Okay. Well, according to, I go according to the code. According to the code, I haven't received no compensation for nothing. Um, I'm due compensation because compensation for me, according to the code, and I'm trying to get everybody else on board with this, nothing less 
than justice, which means, what is the definition of justice according to what I have written? Guaranteeing that nobody's mistreated or whomever's being mistreated is going to make a problem for me. That's very logical. Okay. And guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Because if the person that needs help the most doesn't get the most constructive help, that person is going to make a problem for me. So you got to guarantee that no person is mistreated. See, when people are not being mistreated, they're not likely to mistreat anyone else if they put the two together. Not being mistreated, they're not being mistreated, and they're getting the help that they need. Now, that person, there are some exceptions, and the white supremacists are definitely like that. I mean, they are exceptions to that. Because they mm-hmm. enjoy hurting people. They get fun out of it. That's why they love murder. They love stories about murder. They make TV programs. I mean, they cost millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Sometimes at the box office making billions, I guess. About what? People killing people. So they love it. They love to build to destroy. They can do both. That's why I say that they can do justice and accomplish the same thing that they have done with the system of racism. They can do it. They can have all the wonderful things that we see the white supremacists do without mistreating anybody. They can have that. And we should be trying to get them to do it, persuade them by any means necessary. That's what the code is about. Basically, ultimately, trying to sit around the table without shouting and name calling and all that, lower our voices, and just negotiate the terms of producing a product called justice, because under the system of justice, theoretically, we've never seen it, you can do the same, accomplish all of the things that the system of white supremacy has accomplished, because they are experts at doing things. But they're terrible and interacting with people, and don't want even act, don't want to interact with people in a constructive manner if those people have color in their skin. And also just practice on each other. They, the white supremacists practice mistreating each other, and they do this to stay in practice. So they'll be experts at handling the dark people of this planet and ultimately of this entire universe. They're making plans now to go everywhere all over the what you call the galaxy or or even beyond that for the next trillion or 50 trillion years and spread the gospel of white supremacy everywhere where they don't have it, don't need it, never thought of it. If there's any place out there that's why they keep looking for people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They're not looking for things out there. They get bored with that. They get things. They get bored with the things that they have, and they got everything. But they like to be around some dark people so they can, hey, saddle up. Let's go, you know, let's go Negro hunting today. That's fun. Let's chase them down the street. We used to do it on horses. Now we do it on pickup trucks. Okay. All right. The question. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Corey. Get ready, Corey. You're from Milwaukee. Let me see here. Put this over here. And um, okay, Corey, you're live with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead with your question. Good morning, Mr. Bobby, and good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Uh, you remain on the line, please. Go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. 
Uh, if I can remain on the line, that would be great. Um, Mr. Fuller, um, my question is uh, in reference to page 73 in the 2016 edition under the area of economics. Um, you wrote about money, and it says, to the best of your ability, practice trading or exchanging information, labor, materials, etc., without using or without directly depending on the use of money whose distribution and or value is directly or indirectly dominated by the racist man or racist woman. Um, Mr. Fuller, can you please explain how that is a better approach instead of trying to receive money in exchange for uh, services or labor because I find myself in a situation where I'm not receiving compensation that I'm asking for that I feel is due to me and possibly this is a better approach to to not rely on money as much as possible. Yes, just what it says in the textbook. You know, look around you and see where you can... uh, In the old days, a lot of people did what you call barter. But you might not be in the kind of environment where people know how to do things. See, sometimes, uh, even uh, among black people, people knew how to do things. So a person who was a brick mason would go next door and say, you know, uh, I, I can help you build your a brick house, you know, and show you how to do it because that's my trade. And then the person who lived in the house that was kind of falling down and he loved to have a brick house, the person right next door, someone he knows, has a trade, and the person whose house he would like for it to be made out of brick would get the person next door to help him to do it or to do it. And a number of people who knew about being masons and all like that would all get together and help that one person build that big house. And no money is being exchanged, uh, or a minimum amount, maybe. All right? And then later on, the person who knew how to build a boat, would tell his neighbor, who is a mason, oh, you need a boat, Bill? I know how to build boats, because that's my trade. But see, that's not the case anymore. Those black people are not taught to do anything useful by the white supremacists. They taught teach most black people the way that they teach me, the way that I was taught, how to use a lot of words. And I have to use the words to do what? Beg. Why? Because I began to realize halfway through school, what do I know how to do? When I was out in the country, I knew how to do something. Because I learned from people who were still knew how to do something. I'm sitting up here talking about it. they got all these books, but they're not, you know, and the teacher's going on and on, and everything sounds pretty. But I ain't learning nothing about how to do anything. That wasn't my teacher's fault. They have to do what, quote, unquote, the school board said, and when I was coming up, the school board, like anything with authority, was white. And I think that might be going on all over the world now. The white supremacists know how to teach black people a whole lot of nothing, but it sounds like they're teaching you everything. And it really comes to the surface when you realize what you can do and what you can do. That pays. That Hmm. pays. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Corey. Uh, thank you for your call. Let's see here. Let's do a Gmail here. This is from who is this? This is from Man. Says this, Mr. Fuller. I know you're a big film fan. I have two questions. I watched High Noon with Gary Cooper, excellent movie. Was the lesson in that movie highlighting being alone and and a one man army? and not to rely on other people to help you fight your battle? Is that correct, or did I misunder, uh, he said, did I misunderstood the lesson? That was the main reason, a lot of the reasons, that I have that movie on that list. It's a kind of a corny movie, but that is, you, you, got, you got that lesson correct. And that's what I've asked everybody to do. Look for the lessons in all of those movies. Some, most of them are real, what you call corny movies. But the lessons are there. That black people everywhere, non-white people everywhere, victims of white supremacy everywhere, just learn every lesson in movies like Ombre, High Noon, Gone with the Wind, Casablanca, all of them that are on that list. The Bridges of Pokeri, and in answer to your question, High Noon is a movie about being alone, that everybody abandons you in a crisis, and then you figure, yeah, I should have prepared to do this whole job by myself before I started even thinking about including anybody else. Because when when the chips are down, I just might find myself by myself when the chips are down. Yes. That's what that movie, I think that's the reason, that's the lesson that white people send to each other. Uh-huh. Okay. He says... Um, classic sec- movie, High Noon. Okay. He said the second question is, Mr. Fuller, since you are from Oklahoma, do you know anything about the Osage Native Americans back in the 1920s? They were granted oil rights and profits, and the white supremacists murdered them one by one. I ask because I ask because later this year there will be a film released by Martin Scorsese adapted by a non-fiction book. Mr. Fuller, what do you think about what do you think about it? Thanks for your time. Sure, I heard all these stories when I was coming up in Oklahoma. And not only that, uh, people on my mother's side, the Fulsoms, uh, some of them got some money. And my aunt, for certain, got some oil money. But most of the people who, you know, had what you call Indian blood or who were full-blood Indians, we we were associated with, on my mother's side, I was associated blood-wise with Raleigh Scott, who was a full-blood Creek Indian. And that's what the records show. But uh, I didn't know all this when I was coming up, back in the 1920s. But in the 1800s, all the people who were around at that time, they knew all about that type of thing. And just like Indians everywhere, the Indians were decimated physically, killed. You hunt Indians down, I mean, the Indians were like hunting jackrabbits. I mean, you kill an Indian, well, I mean, hey, that's the only good... The expression was, the only good Indian is a dead one. That came from the white supremacists. They moved in an Oklahoma in force after saying that it was Indian territory, but they discovered all there. That changed the whole dynamic overnight. The white supremacists showed up everywhere and started killing Indians. 
a few black people migrated from the south. They heard that growing up north ain't going to help you too much. So since a lot of black people knew how to do things and were used to hardship, they say, well, I will go to Indian Territory. It's wide open. And so that's how my quote, unquote, father wound up in Oklahoma. Of course, he heard that story. He was he was around in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. So he migrated on foot from Arkansas, Conway, Arkansas, into Oklahoma Territory. Hmm. Was that part of the Trail of Tears? Go go ahead. Was that part of the Trail of Tears, uh, that part of uh, Arkansas, on up to Oklahoma? Well, they moved what they called the five civilized tribes. Yes. Over the what they called the Trail of Tears. It was a, it was. They took different routes, but it was all called the Trail of Tears. Mm -hmm. And these were Indians that came from. Florida, Georgia, uh, a lot of other places. They just rounded them up and told them to leave where they were, that fertile land in Georgia and all like that, and go out there in Oklahoma Territory because everybody passed through what was the land that we now call Oklahoma. Nobody wanted to stay in Oklahoma. That's the Dust Bowl. That's what they called it during the 1930s. Why? You couldn't grow nothing there. There wasn't nothing there. Hmm. I mean, people just passed through it. So they gave it to the Indians. That's why they got that expression. Give it to the Indians. Give it back to the Indians. After they're settled there, some, they'll find some, you know, uh, farmland that wasn't good farmland. They say, give this place back to the Indians. Let them... Let them come here and starve. And then they found oil, and then took it, killed them, and took it, huh? Oh yes, and they kept doing that until they took it all. Mm. Like, uh, like Geronimo and Sitting Bull, I think it was one or the other. I get them mixed up sometimes. Yes, sir. But I think it was Sitting Bull that said that the white man made many promises. He said he promised that he would take our land, and he took it. That's the only promise he kept. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, speaking about taking land, let's take this opportunity to speak about your book. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. The book is about the individual person, like someone said about the movie High Noon. Black people and non-white people of this entire planet need a code. The white supremacists have a code. I'm not saying that all white people are white supremacists, but the white supremacists who are white supremacists have a code. Everybody who has a code is successful at what they do because the code guides them, not emotions, but a code that says what? Do this, don't do that. That's all a code is. Yes, sir. This is the best way to get a result. Find the best way to get the results you're seeking and make a code around that best way. So that you always do it. Why? Because it always works. Black people don't have anything like that. We scramble around every five minutes trying to figure out what to do about anything. When the white supremacists hand down a code, generation after generation, they'll say, do this, don't do that. Because that's all the code is. Do this, don't do that. Do's and don't. Do's and don't. And you do this by trial and error. You build a code. The white supremacists have a racist code. And any kind of code is successful when it goes up against people that don't have one at all. And black people do not have a counter-racist code. 
So that's what my book is supposed to be. It's not a complete code. You know you have, because people have asked me, well, where is the whole code? I said the white supremacists has got a whole code because they're successful. That's why they're white supremacists. I say we won't have a whole code till we figure out how to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. It's a code for doing that. It's a code for doing everything. Planting flowers or chopping cotton or driving a car. It's a code for doing it. A certain way you go about doing things and a certain way you better not go about doing it. Or well, it ain't going to work. The code is just about eliminating the things that don't work and hanging on to the things that do work. So I'm trying to write a book called The Compensatory Counter-Racist Code, where when black people adopt it, like I started off this program this morning saying, stop accusing America of doing anything against anybody, because it ain't true. A code is based on truth. The white supremacists understand that. That's why they don't play with the truth themselves, except when they're around black people, people of color. Then they, you know, go blank. But when they are making plans for black people, they stick with the truth. Because when you're lying to yourself, you're doomed to failure. Something that black people love to do. We love to lie to ourselves. And then go around trying to recruit everybody else to lie right along with them. Stay away from the truth. Now, a great number of black people who believe in, hey, I don't believe in nothing phony. A growing number, I won't say a great number, are beginning to do that. And the white supremacists do not like that at all. They want black people to go around all puffed up, celebrating everything, including every failure that they make, and call it success. That's what we do. Why? We don't have a code. So the textbook for victims of white supremacy is supposed to help us to get one. And what is a code? Something that works. Every time you do it, rather than something that you've got to guess about, every time the subject, whatever it is, comes up. Mm-hmm. Negro scratching his head. There are millions of cartoons showing that. Black person scratching their head, trying to get their brain to work, because that's something we don't ever, we've been programmed, never use our brain, but spin around, I mean, on our, uh, on our heads, jump up and down, turn flips, be strictly body people. And now the white supremacists are working on destroying our bodies. And you can see that just walking down the street. Yes, sir. Somebody with that kind of body caught in a fire and got to run down four flights of stairs Look at a lot of the black people right now, and that's a growing number, too, with this poisonous food, what's supposed to be food. It tastes good, but we're sitting there wolfing it down, and the white supremacists are killing us. Mm-hmm. See, that's anti-code. We're supposed to be finding everything that we can that's real food. I had to do it. I didn't want to turn the roof. Give me a, 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 a four buckets 
of greasy french fries and get out of my way. I was just like most black people. Mm-hmm. Don't come around me with no greasy french fries. Hot. Right out of that, that, that little wire thing that they put them in. Right on the plate. Yeah, that, yeah, that basket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, a huge bucket of salt. And I'll sit there and eat them all. Ain't no limit. Ain't no such thing as full. Ain't no such thing as full. Because we've been denied food for so long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a reason. The white supremacists understand that. So mm-hmm. now we just think that everything in sight go to a, you got a catering a caterer there, you're gonna get everything on that table if you're black. Mm-hmm. Put everything on there. Well what is it? Uh put it on there. If I don't like it I get rid of it. Just put it oh. Oh. pile it on that plate. That's a, okay. Okay. That's what the code is about. Getting okay. us to go against what we're used to. Yes, sir. So this book that we can get by going to producejustice.com produce com. is supposed we'll to help what? you. It's supposed okay. to help each and every okay. individual black person that picks it up solve problems. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. If you just want to know broadly speaking what the book is about, it's about each and every non-white person, every victim of white supremacy, solve your individual problems. So the theory is, and I know it's correct, if you solve the problems of each individual non-white person, you solve the problems of all non-white okay. people. All right. And that's the philosophy of the book. Okay. Go to Which... ProduceJustice.com, and oh. I hope it fulfills that mission for you. As an individual person. As an individual person. Okay. Uh, Before we close out the um, hour, the first hour, let me read this from the chat room. Um, It says, study. I cannot pronounce the person's name because I'll butcher it up. But anyway, it was very good. It said, study, learn and understand what an an American is and what an American is not. Do not call any person American unless he or she practices justice and correctness at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Do not call any person American who practices white supremacy, racism, and or who directly or indirectly tolerates, cooperates with, and or submits to submits to the will or power of any person who practices white supremacy and or directly or indirectly helps to establish or maintain the practice of injustice or correctness. Why? Here's the explanation. An American is a person who does not at any time any place, in any area of activity, practice, support, or tolerate white supremacy, racism, or any other form of injustice or correctness. That last part was a quote from Neely Fuller, Jr., for those who have to go, we that concludes the first hour. So we thank you for uh, listening to the first hour and participating for those that did call uh, for the first hour. But now if you have to go, hopefully we will hear from you uh, next week. But for those who are going to stay, we have a second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Coming up in seven seconds. Thank you for listening. All righty, welcome Black to the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. 
Now, we'd like for you to be a participant in today's uh, program, and all you have to do is dial this number, 516-453-9921. Press the number one button, and you will get in line to uh, have Mr. Fuller answer your uh, question, or you can give a short and quick VGQ. VGQ, you can do that. Make sure you also give the call screener your name. And that also includes for those who will be calling for the first time. Give the call screener your name so that I can know that you are on and that you will be heard. You can also contact uh, the show to ask a question by using my Gmail. It is the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And at a point in time, not particularly on this show, but at a certain time I will read it and I will give you a symbol that I've got it and also let you know when it's read. And lastly, you can join the chat room. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com and you want to make sure that you see where it says programs. Click on programs and then uh, shows will come up and you want the Produce Justice Show, you click on that, and the chat room becomes available where you can join the chatters and get in there and learn some pretty good information in the chat room. So you can do that. Okay, let's go back to the phone lines, and we're going to go to New York, and we have Tess. Get ready, Tess. I'm going to clue you in. Let's see here. or get this cursor over there. Okay, Tess, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Good morning. You're live. Good morning. Mr. Fuller. Good morning. You brought mm-hmm. Mr. Fuller, you brought light to the question which way did the white people go? My question to you is what are your suggestions for non white people who wish to collaborate with each other? Thank you. Oh, uh, Doctor Code. Whatever that you know, collaborate means. That when we interact with each other, do it according to the code. And one thing we don't do is contact each other. That's a that's a real big one. One of the first things, one of the most outstanding things in counter racist codification is that black people should not interact with each other at all except for constructive reasons. If you're going to visit somebody in their house or whatever, or get in a car with somebody, you better be destination something constructive. Otherwise, get out of the car. If you're going to be going along with anybody in that car, you're 16 years old, you're in the car with a bunch of other 16-year-olds, and you're just in a car. Like, you you know, black people in cars in a lot of places. Where are we going? And what are we going to do when we get there? Because we're all going there together. And it better be constructive. It better have a produce a constructive result. Otherwise, let me out of the car. Just that alone would go a long ways toward making black people the quality of people that people ought to be. Just getting in a car. Where are we going? What are we going to do when we get there? And is it going to produce nothing but constructive results? Otherwise, let me out of this car. Period. Why? Mm. That's cold. Mm-hmm. I'm You're on asking- cold. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I'm on code. Mm -hmm. You're asking questions. All right. Yes. You ask questions. Because every move that black people make from this moment forward, from those who are listening to this, say every move that I make is going to produce a constructive result. If I can all do it. Mm-hmm. Now, when the white supremacists put a gun on you and all like that, then you're under duress then because you're a prisoner of war. But if you're given a least bit of what we call leeway 
to do something constructive rather than do something that's non-constructive, always go the constructive route. Mm -hmm. And you ask people. They say, well, come on, Leroy. I mean, now, you know, we're going, you know, we're going to do this and do that. Say, yeah, but is any part of what you're going to do? Hmm. All oh. parts of what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Constructive. Is any part going to be non-constructive? I want that question answered because all problems are solved, if it's going to be a problem, through the process of questions and answers. Yes. So that's a question. Where are we going? And what are we going to do when we get there? Hmm. And when we leave where we're going, will I leave there with a constructive result or will I leave there on a stretcher? Hmm. Wow. Okay. Now I want that question answered before I get in that car. Okay? And I'm talking about guarantees, Leroy. See, I believe in truth. Yes, the sir. The code requires that I believe in truth. Not in all your pretty talk. Knowing how to rap better than everybody. Am I going to get hurt? Yes or no? Is there a possibility that I will get hurt behind what you are talking about? Is there a possibility that I will lose something that I already have based on what you are talking about? I ain't mad at you. I'm being <laughs> codified. Yes, sir. All and I right. think maybe you ought to be, too. Now, Leroy, if you wish the best for me, don't have me get in this car, and I'm in danger. Okay? Hmm. Does that sound like that makes sense? Because, Leroy, I'm trying to make sense. Now, yes or no? See, you ask questions like that. Every, every, and I'm not t just talking about young black people, because that's what it sounds like I'm doing it. I'm talking about black people. Man, it's a whole lot. People talking about their elders. It's a whole lot of black people's elders, and I want to say this for the whole world, who are locked up tight and who should be there. And they were elderly when they got there. And I'm saying that, I mean, explicitly. It doesn't have anything to do with age. Yes, sir. It has to do with having some sense. Okay. And everybody of every age is stupid about something. Hmm. So don't go by that. Don't go by anybody's age. Go by whether or not they're doing something constructive mm -hmm. or they're not. That's the criteria. Not a whole lot to choose from. Yes, it's sir. either constructive or it ain't. Okay. And don't be involved in nothing that ain't constructive, if you can at all avoid it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's code. That's code. All righty. Thank you, Tess, for your question. Acknowledgement to Freedom Culture Tech, Justice Warrior, and Triple Eight. Rita, thank you, loyal listeners there. Okay. Let's go back to New York. Darnell, get ready. I'm getting ready to clue you in. It's your turn. Darnell, good morning, and you are live. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. Fuller, um, what motivates you to um, stay on cold? My options. If I'm not on cold, I'm going to do something stupid. I get tired of doing things stupid, and I have done a bunch of things that were absolutely stupid. That's the answer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Darnell, for your question. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Taylor in Florida. Get ready. If I can cue you in. 
Okay, Hi, Taylor, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hi, good day, Mr. Bobby. Good day, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Yes, my question is to Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller, what is your ideal woman in the system of white supremacy? Well, if people are talking about mateship, it is someone who believes in doing things that are constructive value. That's your ideal mate for anything, an ideal co-worker. Your ideas are to be of constructive value. That's the one thing that black people worldwide, non-white people, people who of color, dark-skinned people, to latch on to. Constructive result. I say that on this program, and I'll continue to say it. That's what you want out of any move you make. Constructive results, never anything non-constructive. That's what you want to know when you're talking to someone. Just in casual conversation, people will say, well, you, sounds like you're taking all the fun I, away from black people. Well, the code covers that. Doing something constructive is fun. But we have been taught by the white supremacists that something like murder is fun. That's why they glorify it in every TV program. Murder, 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 murder. Kill something. Kill somebody. Find somebody to kill. There ain't nobody around to kill. Find somebody. Or kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Black people... <laughs> You know, and we have latched on to that, particularly mm-hmm. black males and a growing number of black females. Fight. Get out there in the hall in the school and spend not no time in the chemistry laboratory. Be out in the hall fighting. And then and then call a call a crowd around and look at the fight. Fight, fight. Yeah, let's get it on. See, we've been taught to be that way. Mm-hmm. And we think that that is the way to live. That that's what life is all about. And it is. Because you make it that way. And the white supremacists said, we, as long as we got them like that, we got them. Mm. They worship stupidity. And anything that sounds like it makes sense hurts their brain. A black person's brain cannot stand anything that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They're made that way. That's what they tell their offspring. All you got to yes, do is sir. watch them. Mm-hmm. See them walking down the street. Just talking on the phone. They can't even do that like somebody that's halfway civilized. Mm. Four letter words all over the place. You can hear them two blocks away talking on the phone, walking down the street. That's, they're savages. You've got to keep your foot on their necks. Remember that, son. I roll down the window. That's what you're going to hear. Every word, even though we taught them these words, they didn't make these words up. MF and all that. You should get a, you, you get fifteen black people together. That's what you're gonna hear. That's how they act. Well, the question is, where did they get this? They weren't born doing that way. So the white supremacists are the super hypocrites of this entire planet. Hmm. I'm talking. To the, I'm talking to them too, but I'm also talking to the white people who say that they believe in justice. And I'm saying, let's make a big effort. Let black people know that you believe in justice and what justice would look like. Because yes, the, white, the white people of this planet got an idea that word justice is an English word of what justice would be like. In order to practice non-justice, 
efficiently, you have to have an idea of what justice would look like. So white people already know what justice would look like. So all of those who say that they believe in justice, I'm talking to white people now, should seek out people like me. I don't hear the white people calling in on this program. Why? Because, truth be told, it seems like, until they prove different to me, that they are satisfied with the system of white supremacy. Otherwise, they would be calling this program. But they don't have any interest in doing that. If you believe in white supremacy, well, I call Neely, listen to Neely Fuller, somebody black, talking about justice. We already know everything that he ever knew. We can't learn nothing from him. So why mm-hmm. talk to him? Just tell him what to do. That's the only time you talk to a black person, if you're white. Tell them what to do and yes. what they did not do. And other than that, avoid all conversation with them at all. So she got a head full of nothing but garbage. That's how they see us, folks, uh-huh. in case you haven't checked. Okay. Wow. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Let's go down to Houston and get ready, Cleo. Get ready. Get ready, brother. Go ahead, Cleo. You are on set. Did, did I get you, Cleo? Okay. Wait a minute. Hmm. Let's see. Wait a minute. Cleo. Uh, there we go. Wait a minute. Well, it is really there. You go, Cleo. You're on. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Long live NFJ and forever live Logic. My sincere thanks and appreciation to Mr. Bobby, Robert, Sharon, Moon Pie, and the entire CRCS crew for your ongoing partnership with Mr. NFJ in this very important life work. I have a quick VGQ. Having been born into the global power system construct of white supremacy, I've come to understand that over the course of my life. There are many things that I've learned that are incorrect. This necessitates that I unlearn those things that are incorrect while learning those things that are correct and staying on code. So, how am I doing? I'm still learning and unlearning. Okay. Now, did you have a nice question from Mr. Fuller? Appreciate the shout out, too, by the way. No question for Mr. Fuller this morning, just that VGQ uh, to help people think about the importance of doing both, learning and unlearning, undoing the things that we've learned that are incorrect, having been programmed in the system of white supremacy. Thank you, Mr. Bobby. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cleo. All righty. We're going in the Midwest. I don't know where from. Looks like the two. Well, anyway, Leona, get ready. Let me cue you in here, Leona. Get this thing over here and see what's happening here. Oh, this is this is not good. I can't. Hmm. Leona, I'm trying to get you in. I'm pressing all the buttons. Uh, not good. Morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, Leona. Yeah, it, it wouldn't. It's probably me. Okay, I'm going to say it's me. Go ahead, Leona. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Mr. Fuller's. Mr. Fuller, so I have a, a couple of questions, but let me go with the first one uh, first. Um, regarding the nine major areas of people activity in the known universe, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, what do you say to people who, who well, seem to think that there should be maybe a couple other major areas of activity, for example, technology or health? What uh, what do you say to people who um, think that may or may not be necessary? I, yeah, just curious. Well, you can have words to describe anything that you want to do. That's all communications mm-hmm. is about. 
if people mm-hmm. understand what it is you're trying to do, or you understand what it is you're trying to do, and you just put a label on it, whatever that label is. I mean, the code says you can make up as many labels as you want to for whatever it is. But in the code, health and technology and all that comes under economics. Economics is what? How you use your time and energy. Food is energy. See, and food has a lot to do with health. You put it put it in your body, you're putting energy in your body, or rather you should be, rather than put something in your body that's going to cut down on your energy and, and lead you to the grave faster. Because anything you put in your body, that's what it's going to do. It's either going to build your body up with strength and something called health or healing. Healing means, you know, making up for the deterioration that's going on in your body. You start deteriorating from the time you were born. Mm -hmm. And so you want to sustain your time here on the planet. By in the last 10 years at least of my being here on the planet, mostly by luck or whatever you want to call it, or by the good, the goodwill of my Creator, because that that's what that's all about. But I'm helping it along now, because I am more conscious now than I was 15, 20 years ago. Yes, sir. Of what I put in my body, because I've discovered I'm better, and so every black person now should. You know, from the time you were born, you're really supposed to be in the healing process. You're supposed to be fed, of course, the store-bought food for babies is all chemicals. So in the system of white supremacy, a lot of things do not work the way that they should. Uh, So-called primitive people, if they're given uh, stuff to ward off disease, or something like that. They they turn out to have pretty strong teeth, and they are considered primitive people. But a lot of animals have excellent teeth because they eat the food that is compatible with their bodies. They don't eat a lot of processed stuff and all like that. Nature takes care of the process. You don't have grape juice. until you process it. So what do you mean by process? It means you take something away from whatever already is there. That's what process means when you talk about food, nutrition. Mm -hmm. So everything in its natural state, the creator of an apple didn't do anything dumb. You can trust it. An apple got everything in it that an apple should have. You take something away from that apple and then add some sugar. Now you've got something else. That's a process. The creator is the most expert, the greatest expert on how to process what people eat and what animals eat than anything you'll find in the known universe. Whatever mm-hmm. created an apple. Stick with that. Now, I don't like to, but that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people say, well, I got bad teeth, so I can't eat apples. Well, how did you get bad teeth? Like I started getting bad teeth when I was around 13 years old. That's not normal. But what happened was, I'm eating candy bars. So you keep doing that. And it's all stuck between your teeth and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Your teeth start turning rotten. 
See, a lot of things we just take for granted. We need to just stand back and look at it and be logical. Black people have that reputation everywhere for not being a logical people. Yes, sir. Cause and effect. If you do this, this, and this, this is what's going to happen. Hmm. You say black people hate to think like that. Well, just, I mean, I don't like to think like that. I I feel like, I don't like, you know, that makes me feel bad. That's black people. That's black people. Okay. But you better learn to do what works. And then you really feel good rather than get a temper high because we love that. And then we're mourning for the rest of our lives. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, Leona, I don't see you yes, on sir. my board. Oh, okay, you're still on. Good. I'm so- okay, good. I'm so happy about that because your name is not on the board. What was your second uh, question there? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Said that. Oh. Oh. Try, you know, with. Coming in broken up. I'm treated. Yona, dear, you're, you're breaking up. Can you can you say uh, ask your question again? Hmm. Corey, we say. Paul, sir. Um, did you hear? No, Mr. Okay. Oh, okay. Coming in uh, broken you, up real bad. Yeah, yeah, Leona, okay, you're coming I'll, in broken. I'll, I'll call back another day. Sorry about that. I don't know oh, what's going okay. on. Okay. All right. Well, thank thank you for your call, honey. All right, thank you very much. Okay, what we're going to do here, we're going to take a little break for the remaining 33 minutes. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller. And we, Neely Fuller Jr., and we would love for you to be a part of the show in the last remaining 30, uh, 30 minutes. And all you have to do is just call this number, which is 516 516- Four five three nine nine two one, and press the number one button so that if you have a question or comment, you can be heard. First time callers, do the same thing. Just give the call screener your name so that I could give you an introduction without butchering it, which I am still learning not to do. Every practice with that. Yes, I do try to practice that. Okay, you can also um, Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y, at gmail.com. Obviously, it probably, obviously, probably, oh boy, my English teacher's going to get me, will not be read today. However, at a certain time, it will be read, and uh, I will give you a symbol. And also notice, you know, when uh, it's going to when your email has been read, so or Gmail has been read, so uh, just just do that. And lastly, you can join the chat room by going to BlogTalkRadio.com. You want to click on where it says Programs, and then what will come up is a list of shows you want to get the Produce Justice Show. Click that, and that chat room is available for you to enter in, and you may do it. And we appreciate that. Just do not ask Mr. Fuller a question through the chat room because that's not what it's for. The uh, uh, Gmail and the uh, call number is what you do for your question. And sometimes it is busy, but we try to make sure, Robert, make sure that, um, that we can get you on, every effort to get you on. For some reason... And I don't know why my machine keeps uh, deleting names. I don't understand what's going on. But anyway, oh, (laughs) the usual suspects are in play. Yeah, okay. All right, back to the phone lines, and let's go out to L.A. Swa, sorry about your Lakers. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Greetings, Mr. Bobby, and greetings, Mr. Millie Fuller. Uh. Newfoot Jr., can you explain why um, the people of this planet are, um, we consist of monsters and monstrosities? Oh, because we don't practice justice. Now, what's 
the difference between a monster and a monstrosity? A monstrosity is a person that acts in a nonsensical way. In other words, not logical, basically. A monster is a person that's not logical and a person who is extremely destructive. That's what the system of white supremacy produces among the non-white people. And in the process of doing that to non-white people, they are that themselves. Because that's the nature of the universe. That's the nature of logic. And if you spread poison, you get some of the poison on yourself. That's like this, as an illustration, the white supremacists said, we're going to poison all these black people with cocaine, heroin, opium. We'll even fight among people who are called the Chinese. We'll force them to use something called opium. They had something. One time I heard or read somewhere or I've heard periodically, they had among people who are called quote unquote Chinese and the white supremacists directly and indirectly instigating something called the proliferation of opium and then had three wars about it. The people who were called the people of color, called Chinese, trying to get rid of it and had to have fight director and indirector, the white supremacists, in trying to get rid of it. And the Chinese, from what I understand, were basically defeated until the white supremacists decided, well, they don't want to push it that far as to fight about it anymore. So they just spread it in other places in the world among non-white people and bragged about it practically in a movie called Godfather One. That's on my movie list on the website. They said, and what did the Don say, Don Corleone, in that movie? He said, in the years to come, what we are putting out will come back to haunt us, our own children and our grandchildren. But the people around the table the other mobsters didn't want to think about thinking that far ahead. Mm-hmm. They were thinking about it now. They were thinking like black people, just what we can do now. Hmm. So now you have what? Something called fentanyl that I understand from what I hear and see, looking at television and listening to the radio, that... Many, many white people are on something that the white supremacists, either directly or indirectly, had something to do, or just about everything to do, with spreading among dark-skinned people and more of it among white people. So what the Don Corleone said around that table has come true. Said, I don't want to deal in that kind of stuff because, like, we putting it out on other people, it'll come back to haunt us mm-hmm. and our own grandchildren because we won't be able to control it that well. Now, that's, that movie was made in 1971. Now, here in 2023, it's come true. It's come true. Yes, sir. All oh. the white supremacists are working to see to it that it doesn't go any further. And, mm-hmm. as they say, in any gangster operation, that is not bad for business. Hmm. Gangster language is, you know, how they, the gangsters talk to mm-hmm. black people, copy, too many black people. You know, it's bad for business. He's, okay. he's bad for business. Kill him. Because he's bad for business. 
He's good oh. for business, so let him survive. Uh huh. All righty. Thank you, Swall, being out there. Oh, has been called the left coast. Thank you for listening. Got a Gmail here. Sit, Doctor Sin Q. I'm gonna get to you after this Gmail. Thank you, Swa. Uh This is from South Africa, Durban, South Africa. Um, Langizi says this. Um, good morning, Mister uh, Fuller. I hope that you are well. I am also well. I have heard from some television activities that pilots have one of the most stressful jobs in the world. This, the experts say, may sometimes lead to suicidal behavior on the part of the pilot, and this may endanger hundreds of lives on board. Mr. Fuller, since you were in the Armed Air Force and have survived so long, how did you use the code to produce constructive piloting that does not lead to collateral damage because of the environmental error factors in in the flying industry? Enjoy the rest of your day, Mr. Fuller. While I was in a military uniform under the title of U.S. Air Force, I was on a plane almost never going anywhere. In answer to the question. I was on a plane. I spent time on an airplane of any kind less than I have at any other time in my existence. When I was in what is called the U.S. Air Force, I was actually on an airplane. I was looking at a lot of planes. But I was actually on an airplane flying anywhere a whole lot less than the average person who goes to the airport, even just once or twice a year. That's the answer to that question. I was Neely Fuller Jr. when he was in the Air Force. Was <laughs> it was a rarity when you saw him on an airplane? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's something you just didn't see. You mm-hmm. saw him in a supply room, supplying airplanes. Okay. Uh, ordering parts for airplanes. That's what I did. Okay. All righty. Well, that answers that. Let's go to Dr. Sin Q out in California. Dr. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can get you in because I'm beginning to have little problems here. Okay, Dr. You got you on. Good morning and welcome. Hey, greetings. Greetings to the both of you. Um, Mr. Fuller, I, uh, I, I have found your movie list to be uh, constructive, and I wondered if you have a list of periodicals that you that you read. Um, do you have a list of peri- periodicals that you read? No, I used to have, but I don't get a chance to read very much now. I try to do a whole lot of writing because I don't have much time left. And uh, even my writing is uh, getting more and more difficult for me to write or read on account of my eyesight's beginning to fail, too. Uh, you know, 
People, people after they stay here a little while begin to wear out. That's just the logic of the universe. Stars wear out. But people wear out faster than stars. Stars last millions of years sometimes. Then you see them streak across the sky. But they have been, before they start doing that streaking, they have been here, some of them, 10 million years. Mm-hmm. No problem. But they find their war out for some reason, and they flamed out. Same things happen to people, but not in 10 million years for one person. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right, Doc. Dr. Sin Q from California. Thank you uh, so much. Okay, let's go back east. And we're going to go to Black Top in the NYC. Boy, that really moved on me. Okay, Black Top, you're on with uh, Mr. Fuller. Go ahead with your question. There are a lot of, there are uh, a few religions today that say that we are living in the last days and that uh, we're about to experience the Great Tribulation, which no man has ever seen before. Uh, how would that apply to what we learn from your code? Don't worry about it. If we're living in the last days, the creator of us and the last days and the first days makes that choice. So you even think about that. You think about what you should be doing with the time and energy that you were given. It comes under the basic economics. When you're born, you're given time and energy. You're supposed to use this time and energy according to the evidence under ideal situations or any situation. If you find yourself here in this solar system on this planet, logic says... How do the people of this planet, including Neely Fuller and everybody else on the planet, use your time and energy? And I came to the conclusion, based on logic, you use your time and energy solving problems. Now, how did I come to that conclusion? Because I have problems. Whatever created me could have created me in a situation where I had no problem. But I had problems. And everybody around me seems to have problems. Hmm. And uh, so I just solve problems. I'm here to solve problems in a manner that will produce what? The most constructive result. And I just do that. And if somebody comes to me and taps me on the shoulder, like I'm being tapped on the shoulder now, and say, Fuller, the last days are coming. Well, the last days come for somebody every second. So you don't think, you don't worry about that. There's somebody right now who is being killed in a car accident. You better believe that. Right this second when we're talking. And when I say somebody, I mean a whole lot of somebody's. Right this second, worldwide on this planet, and you're talking about traffic, I mean, the bodies are stacking up by the second. Yes, sir. Just in car accidents alone, as we speak right now. So Hmm. count your blessings right now. Right now. Because it wasn't you that got killed one second ago or one second right now. Somebody was killed right this minute, but you were. Counts your blessing. Okay. All right, Black Top, thank you. Uh, Dr. Sin Q, uh, look like a, maybe I missed you. I, I don't know, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just wanted to uh, ask, so cause Mr. Fuller said uh, he no longer reads the periodicals, but do you have any suggestions for maybe five of them that you used to read? Do I have any suggestions for what? 
for for five newspapers or magazines that you used to read to get uh, information from? Oh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, the Daily News. I'm in Washington, so I used to take the Washington Post, uh, which is the leading newspaper. And also, uh, it's a black newspaper called The Informer, also the African, Afro-American out of Baltimore. But I don't take any of these papers now simply because, like I said, failing eyesight and also because I just don't have the time. I'm overwhelmed. My time schedule even, you know, I'm not in a relaxed situation at all. I'm, I'm, I steady what I would call work and play, but my work is my play. Like right now, I'm working and playing at the same time. This is my play. Your play can be constructive, I hope, because all your play should be and all your work should be constructive. A black person should be known for anything that's not constructive. That's a part of the code, the main part, Mm -hmm. the purpose for the code. But when you see a black person coming, you say, now there's a person who's about problem solving. You you can depend on it that that person is going to have nothing to do with problem making. That is a person. You see that black person 10 blocks away? Precaution. That that person used to have a reputation for being the greatest problem maker that the universe has ever experienced. But what the code is supposed to do is have that reputation overnight, if we can do it, D, that white people will look out their window and see a black person coming say, now here comes a real problem solver. That's all those people believe in doing solving problems and producing constructive results and enjoying it. Now, that's something I've heard of. Enjoying, I mean, like they're playing, solving problems. And they don't have a problem with it. And they used to be this opposite just a few years ago. That's the way I love to see white people talking about us right this minute. And we can pull that off. Yes, sir. Look at a black person and say, oh, oh, my boy, you talk about being enthusiastic about solving problems. Those are the people. I mean, they'll drive you crazy solving problems. Mm -hmm. And and, and, And having fun doing it. Mm-hmm. Because if you stop and think about it, and I'm talking to the whole audience now, when you solve your problems, you do feel better. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Sin Q. Thank you uh, very, very much. Um, from the Gmail, Ray wanted to know this, Mr. Fuller. says, please have Mr. Fuller explain the importance of each suggestion listed in the code needing to have current and constructive value. Does oh, the individual Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, does the individual victim have to utilize each suggestion based on their own personal situation or does the individual victim have to apply each suggest- a suggestion word for word? Always, every word is supposed to help you solve a problem. If it doesn't, don't use it. I say that over. I say that in the book itself. Be a selective. The person who is asking these questions is right on point. That's how that book is supposed supposed to be used. It says so in the book itself. How the book is supposed to be used. If if it doesn't relate to any of your circumstances, like. I'm here in what they call the Northwestern Hemisphere. There's a whole lot of the things in the textbook for victims of white supremacy. 
And I want to say this for people who are in what you call the Congo or Nigeria or Paris or London or Germany or Australia or any place, Brazil, if you look through Neely Fuller's code book and you see a lot of stuff that does not apply to you in any way, that is to be ignored. Doesn't apply to you. Uh, what he's talking about, this might be where well, that kind of stuff goes on there. It doesn't go on here. I don't encounter none of that that he's mm-hmm. talking about. So the caller is right on point, right on code. No, if it's something that doesn't apply to you, doesn't apply to your circumstances, different people have different circumstances of dealing with racism, because that's what the book is all about, and trying to produce a product called justice. So if you just find two or three things in the entire code book that helps you to do something, then do it. In fact, to give you an illustration, one of the first people to read my book came to me after I loaned him a copy and handed it back and said, Fuller, it ain't nothing in that book that helps me do anything. And I said, that's exactly the way the book is supposed to work. And really... That is the goal of the book, because it means you don't have a problem of any kind that this book relates to, and that what Neely Fuller has written about it, because you have solved all those problems if you had them in the first place. So therefore, the book doesn't apply to you. That's like many people have called in on this podcast and said, I'm not no victim of nothing. I say, well, then this this code book is not for you at all. You're not a victim of anything? You're not a victim of racism? And the person said, no. I ain't yeah. no victim of no white supremacy. People mm-hmm. have said this on, that, on this program. Mr. Bobby can test, I, I think, can test yes. out of that. Yes. yes sir. All right. <laughs> So the book does not apply to them at all. That first, one of those first readers of my book, said there was nothing in that in in that book. I just had one volume at at that time Mm -hmm. in the original volume. He said there's not. He said he he went through that book carefully. There is nothing in there that applies to him or helps him to do anything. Mm Mm-hmm. And I said, that's exactly the way the book is supposed to work. And not only that, you should write a book. I edit that. And I will throw mine away. Hmm. Okay. And tell anybody to buy yours. And I will be helping you to sell it. Hmm. Because okay. this book covers quite a bit of things that are problems. So you're telling me that there ain't nothing in this book that I have loaned to you will help you solve any kind of problem? I said, man, you, you're magic. And <laughs> I, I okay. want to read a book that you wrote. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the way it's supposed to work. And that still huh. applies to everybody yes. out here. If the book does not apply to you in any way, doesn't help you to do anything, and this book is pretty thick, then I I would like to see how you pull that off as far as you have come. And nothing in this book applies to you at all and will help you do anything First of all, I'll say that I don't believe it if you're black on this planet. But if you can show me where it doesn't, show me, not just tell me, 
then I'm I'm going to tell the world, man, everybody should stop what they're doing. Every black person on the planet, because if you don't have anything, any kind of problem that's connected directly or indirectly with racism, and you're black, and on planet Earth in 2023. You are a magic Negro, a magic black person, or a magic person. In fact, I don't even want to hear anything from the wealthiest white person. Mm-hmm. Um, if if I can run across any black person who okay. can say truthfully that they are not a victim of anything. Okay. Um, despite the fact that the usual suspects are doing their thing, there is a question that came up from uh, Justice Warrior, which said, Mr. Fuller, did that guy actually read your book, or did he did he just skim through it and come out, come to that conclusion? Also, what types of books did he tell you that he considered useful. He didn't. I didn't get that far because I didn't have to. See, it's not my job to convince anybody of anything except what they think is a problem. That's why I said a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action. And or action. In other words, just the book might be impress somebody just enough to think about it. Say, well, I'll think about what Neely Fuller wrote because I'm going to read the book. But I ain't going to speak about none of it, and I ain't going to act on none of it. I'm just going to think about it. Well, the book is for that, too. See, it's, I always say, and I don't particularly like this word at all, but it's useful in this particular instance. This book, the textbook for victims of white supremacy by Neely Fuller Jr. is totally democratic, meaning the individual reader decides what is of value to him or her. The individual, not to the person standing next to him. That's why it's called the United Independent System. You're united, possibly, or should be, in getting rid of problems. I think most people don't want problems. They're not uh, knowingly inviting problems. Mm-hmm. And But you're independent in the way you go about doing it. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you can be independent if the white supremacists huh. let you if you're black. Hmm. A lot of people, and we're getting ready to wrap it up, a lot of people in the chat uh, came uh, are concluding that this person, whoever this person that told you what he said, uh, they have concluded that it sounds like he may not have read that book in order to come up with whatever he told you, but I don't know. That's <laughs> but not he said my job. what he said. Yeah, right, I, I take him as what he said. He said yeah. it's of no use to him. That's all I need to hear. I didn't need okay. to know nothing. See, it's not a debate. I, 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 you know, and the code doesn't allow me to do that. Yes. The code allows me just to put the book out there and explain what's in the book, and people can take it or leave it. That's it. That's the best way. Well, the white supremacists about... already coerce people to do stuff. Oh, ab- absolutely. Read this. Don't read that. No. Read Nita Fuller's book if you think it's worth something. <laughs> and the code says read anybody's book. All right. I mean, the head of the Ku Klux Klan. If you think it's worth something to you, okay. I, know I do. We're going to have to leave it there. You can get Mr. Fuller's book by going to producejustice.com. Thank everybody for listening. Thank everybody for calling in, for your comments, and all that good stuff. It was very, very good. I'm still learning. I know you are also. Mr. Fuller, thank you. Call us again. Thank you. We'll try to do better. We made so many mistakes today, but we got through it. So we'll I'm hopefully see you next week. ProduceJustice.com is where you can get all the information. Have a good week. Be productive. Bye.